I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We have with us now Ben Torricampo, who is Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself first, Ben. Tell us uh, where you teach and what you teach. Okay, I've taught at Robles School for uh, nine years and uh, I teach fifth grade multiple subjects. Uh, Robles School uh, has more than 400 diverse students and my class, I had 30 of my own students in addition to eight uh, students that I adopted from a combination class and one from a special day class. So I had 39 students. It was, uh, I thought it would be challenging, but it, it turned out to be, it ran very smooth and uh, enjoyed teaching fifth grade because of the emphasis on science. So. Well, tell me about the additional students that you did, me, you said adopt. Um, why did you do that? What, what was the, the reason there? Um, just to help out the, the combination class so uh, they would be exposed to all the science because I, uh, again, fifth grade has that emphasis on the science. They have. It's an extra start test I have to take at the end of the year for the start test. Mm -hmm. And so if I can get everyone together instead of having to teach it twice, uh, I thought it was more beneficial for the students. So. And what have you found out? Uh, it, it's just amazing, amazing results because the students wanted to work, the students wanted to be there, and uh, they produce uh, excellent results because of their motivation to work. So. Mm -hmm. Now, how many years have you taught at Robo? Uh, eight years as a regular teacher, fourth and fifth grade, and uh, my first year as a substitute there. Okay, so you've been in the community for a while. So yes. what's it like working in a small school community where you've got siblings coming up and you get to know the families really well? It's, it's welcoming. Uh, the parents come, they always drop by and they, they tell me, give me stories about how they used to uh, uh, go to school there and attend there and uh, their grandparents. So it's, it's an old school that dates back in the early 1900s. So it's, 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 it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So in that type of environment, you get to establish some really good relationships with the students' families. How important is that for a teacher to have those kinds of really strong relationships? Oh, that, that is uh, absolutely uh, key to one of the successes in, in reaching out to the families. If you know the, the families, uh, the students tend to work a lot harder. The students, uh, they want to be there and they know with just a simple phone call uh, if, if they start to slide in their grades or, or their behavior, then you know that you're going to make that call and it just makes your life a lot easier when you have that connection with the families. And when you have to make that call, it's, it's difficult but it's something that a teacher has to do. That's right. It's, it's difficult but at the same time, it, it can improve their grades in the future and, in, and makes your uh, classroom run so much easier uh, in, in the future also. So what are some of the specific challenges that, that, that you're facing these days oh, as a teacher? That's what I love about being a teacher is all the challenges and I think uh, motivating them is, is, is a difficult task but at the same time it, it gets to be, uh, it, it's fun. You have to find innovative ways to uh, motivate the students, to make them want to work, to make them um, want to succeed and so we always practice the three D's of success which is uh, desire. If they have the desire to do something, accomplish a goal, get 100% of the test or want to be a doctor or an engineer, um, that, that's half of the battle right there is having that desire and dedication or excuse me discipline, doing it whether they're tired. A lot of kids come to school tired but they find a discipline to work and they continue to work and dedication sticking with it and never giving up. I was given the example of uh, my wife. She took her nine years to graduate from college, but she never gave up raising three kids and working full time. So they 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 look at the examples that I provide them, and uh, and I and uh, if you sell it to them and uh, they really believe it, and you believe it, they they will uh, you'll have positive outcomes. And I've had a lot of great mm -hmm. results from that. What about those students who are particularly difficult to motivate? What kind of special things do you have to do for them? Um, just in instilling that discipline and that, that's where the discipline takes in. You got to make sure that uh, that they work and you, when, when you give them that confidence uh, that they are improving and when you work with them before school, after school or even during lunch, you give them that confidence and when they start to raise their scores or their test scores or assignments, then they start to work for you and then before you know it, they're, they're just like everybody else scoring 80, 90 percent or 100 percent on the test and it's, it's been very successful. So it's the, so you have 39 students and 39 personalities, 39 different individual motivation plans basically. Uh, overall, I, I do the general, uh, uh, the, the hard work, you, the discipline, you've you got to stick with it no matter what. But I also have a lot of 
I know I talk a lot about it, work. We, we, we do work, work, work. But at the same time, they have a lot of incentives. And uh, I, we have fun educational field trips, for example, to Exploratorium. The kids raise their own money for that. I do skating. We have a lot of parties. And so we work hard uh, to have fun. And when the students earn it, then they, they feel more valued and they get responsibility. And, uh, and, and the outcome is, is just amazing. So how does it impact the student when they know from you that you have really high expectations? When, whenever anyone scores an 80% or higher on the test, they see their name on the board, they all, they all want to be on the, on the bandwagon and, and get 100% or at least a 90% or 80%. And so they just, they work extremely hard. And it's expected. When you walk into my class, you, you're going to score... 80% or higher, you're going you're to be proficient or advanced. And, and I, I, I take uh, I, nothing, um, not, nothing lower than that. And so, but as long as they're improving, I might even accept that also. I'm looking for growth. That's the most important. And effort. And effort, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. So in the amount of time that, you, that you've been a teacher, how have you seen things change for you in the classroom as far as the demands on you and the, and the, the extra things that you might have to do to get your students to perform well? There's, there's been changes throughout the years. Uh, one positive change I could look at is the, cur the curriculum. I had a student come in a couple years ago, two, three years ago, and, and I asked him, what could I do to improve uh, my teaching, or how can I prepare you for uh, the middle school years? And he said, in algebra, I wish I had more, exp uh, more practice with expressions. And uh, a year later, I, I saw an opportunity to pilot the our new math and vision program, and that, that was my answer. And our curriculum is just improving uh, dramatically, and it's, uh, it's had great success. And with new curriculum comes uh, the part where the teacher has to kind of bone up and study as well. Oh, exactly, exactly. There's, and, and especially with the new envision, you have to uh, prepare more for the, tech, the technology aspects of it. And so it, it, it's more time consuming, but it, you're, it benefits you and the class overall. So. Mm. So how, how did you become a teacher? What, what brought you to this? That's an excellent question, and that's a tough one to answer. Uh, I never wanted to be a teacher. Really? Ne never wanted to be a teacher. Uh, I was uh, in the military, and I thought that was going to be my career forever. And did very well, but I was deployed many times. And mm -hmm. so I had to find an alternative career that was suitable for family life. And I looked back at my strengths, and my wife said, why don't you try education? Because you love teaching. That's what I like to do. I trained, and I enjoy teaching. And so she... Uh, I started substituting at Roba School, and the kids were just uh, welcoming, and, they, and, and, and I wanted them to, to succeed. Even if I was just there for one hour or just for that one day, I wanted them to do well. So every lesson was important to me. And I think by the end of that year of substituting, I, got to, I was able to subs uh, do a long-term substitution at, uh, at a, for a difficult class. And the kids were very receptive, and they wanted me there every single day. And... Uh, just to see their growth, I think that's when I knew uh, that I should be a teacher. And I, got, I was fortunate. I was offered a job immediately after that. So it's, it's been an incredible experience. It, it wasn't something that you thought about, but it just kind of, it just kind of came it, it to you. It just happened. And one of uh, the principals that interviewed me, um, she said it was serendipity that it just happened. And it, it was. It, it's, it's amazing. It's, uh, I'm, I'm very lucky to be in this profession. So what do you say to those folks who are considering teaching as a profession to, to consider it? If you want to make an impact, you want to make a difference in one child or a dozen kids or hundreds of kids and make a difference in this world and just, uh, uh, and just to help one student uh, brighten their day or brighten their future for the rest of their lives, uh, this is the job uh, to have. This is, uh, it, it's undescribable uh, when you see kids succeed, when you see them uh, falling behind, and then their grades just improve throughout the year. And it's, it's an incredible experience, just like jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are some similarities, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, we appreciate your time, and we congratulate you on the award you've received. We've been speaking with Ben Torcampo, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me.